It's Tim Astral, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. We're here with another episode of our ongoing discussion with Team Free Range Dames. These are the ladies that are doing the uh, really impressive Rebel Rally. Rebel Rally, excuse me, Rebel Rally. I've been uh, working on my pronunciation lately. Um, of Hyundai, Hyundai. Anyways, Rebel Rally. Uh, getting off topic here. Uh, we have Elise Bent and Mercedes Lilenthal. Um, they have been out practicing, and we wanted to do another kind of episode of checking in to see how the practice is going. It looks like they're still smiling, uh, <laughs> that there's, there's been no uh, ongoing feuds, uh, no beatdowns in the desert. So uh, you guys were recently together in, was it Montana or Idaho? I couldn't figure out where it was. Idaho. Idaho. And yeah. so this is your first time getting together to practice. How did that go? It was the second time, actually. Okay. Um, we did have a, a bit of a practice session after Overland Expo West uh, up in Flagstaff. So this time around, yeah, we went to the St. Anthony Sand Dunes um, for a whole day. Um, and it was really fun, actually. Just a tad bit windy today. Elise and I from Team Free Range Dames. We're at the St. Anthony Sand Dunes in Idaho. And uh, got to our first bearing stop. We pinpointed that tree there and decided to drive to it. It took us a little bit and go around because there are a lot of cornices here. And now Elise is out taking a bearing so we can find our first geocache spot. Just got here about an hour ago and uh, yeah, having a great time. A bit windy. pretty cool. I, I have to agree with Elise. Um, you know, it's completely different sand than out here in Oregon. I could tell you that much. So had a lot of fun. So you have, you had a fun day, but the Rebel Rally is multiple days. Yes. So uh, did that enter your mind? You're thinking about this? Like, yeah, I can do this this many days. If this is exciting, I can do it uh, this long. Well, it's going to be really exhausting, but yeah, I mean, we can do it. Um, you know, I think after a few days, you kind of get into a routine um, and you don't have to think quite as hard about the little stuff, the minutia, um, you know, so it, it kind of lets you focus on the bigger stuff, um, which also helps a little bit with mental fatigue. So how did the practice go? Did you guys go out there and like try to get lost, then use the, um, your compass, your, I don't know, finger, uh, doing the wind. I don't know what, you know, what do you, what do you do when you get out there? So we actually went geocaching. Um, if anybody knows about it, it's uh, or doesn't know about it, it's uh, where basically um, people share GPS coordinates of um, like a little capsule that they leave. Um, they leave the GPS coordinates online, um, so you can typically people use their GPS um, to find them. They just download the coordinates onto their GPS system and then go out and you know, explore and try to find those objects. Uh, we do the same thing, um, but we try to use uh, mapping compass as much as possible. It was very interesting from the driver's perspective, uh, having the lease find the geocache coordinates and then um, basically say, all right, let's go to the one o'clock position or the, you know, the 11 o'clock or back over to the five. And, and for me to have to navigate the sand dunes to figure out, okay, that's definitely a cliff. That's a cornice. Can't do that. Backtrack, go around, deviate, and come back again. So it was very interesting from us, um, you know, for, for our perspective to be able to work like that because we haven't quite had the chance to do that yet. Did you discover that, you know, speed is a factor, but it's not the only factor in that, you know, if you go faster, it's going to, the coordinates are not going to catch up. I mean, you have this whole game you got to play with keeping Elise on the same path and you're on the same path, but trying to have, you know, not spend a day and a half looking for one object. Yeah. So yeah. that's something that we're going to have to work on, um, especially for the Rebel, is that there are a lot of checkpoints throughout the day. And so we do have to, uh, you know, manage our time and say, hey, if, you know, if we're spending two hours on this one checkpoint, like, that's not cool. We need to just, you know, if, if it's it not 
the one we need to move on. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any uh, points that you got a little nervous about getting stuck? Did you do any recovery kind of drills? We've, yeah, <laughs> we did a couple of recoveries, actually. So, um, wait, wait, wait. I'm like, did you guys get stuck? You're like, yes, we did. Oh, my God, it was great. You know, it's like the energy from getting stuck. Was stuck's great, not great. The... <laughs> if you're not getting stuck, you're not trying hard enough. Oh. Well, we, yeah, exactly, right? You always have to challenge yourself and get stuck, and that way you're learning. But um, it was interesting. So we got there late at night. Um, we had to find a dune flag because we didn't have a dune flag. So we were in Bozeman, Montana, running around trying to find a flag before we left. We got our flag, we got some groceries, um, and got down there 9.30 or so at night. And we, we the campground was full, which we were expecting. So we thought, okay, we'll just you know head off to the dunes and find a primitive spot, which we've done many times together. And so we did that, we found a road. We thought, all right, let's just, of course, everything's pitch black, there's no lights anywhere. And, and uh, decide to you know kind of make our way. And as we made our way, we thought, oh shoot, it looks like there's a car there. Oh great, there are people that are outside of said car and they're not on the road. Let's go check this out. Because, I mean, we've got all the recovery gear, you know. Didn't know what the situation was. So Sure, let's go up to strangers in the dark and let's talk to them. Let's go. Exactly. Especially with me flying. I flew out to see her and I forgot my headlamp, nor did she pack an extra one. So I had my I had my flashlight. She had her headlamp. So we're running with one headlight, one flashlight, and a couple of, you know, Lucy lamps and running around trying to figure out, okay, how can we make this work? Well, it's three huge guys in a Honda Accord. A little sedan oh, yeah. and they got completely they got completely uh, stuck they thought oh well, let's yeah. just pull off into the sand and go camping they didn't make it very far yeah um and then sunk <laughs> yeah they just completely you know high center oh. tried to you know they literally had their camp their camping firewood stuffed underneath the tires they had the right concept but they had them stuffed underneath the tires and were trying to dig themselves out so of course you know it's 10 o'clock at night 10 30 at night we're digging them out you know i'm trying to snap a couple photos in the way you know in the middle and Max yeah. track didn't work, <laughs> so we ended up giving them a good tug and, and pulled them out before we winched them out. So yeah, but that was the first of two major recoveries we did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> uh, what was the second? So the, oh, you tell at least yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we you know during the day um, you know there's a lot of kind of ups and downs um, in the sand dunes, obviously. Um, on one of the downhills, it was just a little bit um, slanted to the side as well. And so um, it was a little bit nerve-wracking going down it just because the sand was so soft and it was at kind of a slant. And um, I think, you know, we maybe we could have um, approached it just a little bit different angle, um, but we did end up sliding off the side of, you know, we were kind of on the edge of this this ledge, you know, going downhill, but also sideways and <laughs> went like oh shoot <laughs> sure, uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> and uh we had to get out of the track because it was now it's at like you know an angle and it's kind of wonky and we're like okay let's think about this for a second yeah um we can't just go because it'll probably the back end will slip and you know we'll probably flip the truck or something um so we um, came up with some solutions, you know, just kind of like took our time, took a look at the situation, scored our options, um, ended up putting the max tracks under the tires to kind of help, um, make sure that the front end would go the direction we would go. It turned, um, kind of off to the side. Um, so basically we could ensure we were going to go straight down. It was not the angle we were hoping for, so we would end up in the bushes but we would hopefully be able to kind of straighten out and not have the tail end slide further down the hill than the front end, um, which would be bad. So <laughs> with all four max tracks, a little bit of digging, um, and um, some good spotting, we, we managed to, uh, to fix that. And so that was a little bit nerve wracking for sure, but it was, um, you know, in retrospect, it was not super sketch. It was just, you know, like there were some possibilities there for something bad to happen and we did all the right things to make that, you know, not happen and only got a few scratches on the truck from the bushes and no other, no other damage. I there think you go. that was a great experience for the two of us, especially, um, you know, as you said, we took our time, we assessed the situation, the sand was a lot deeper than either of us were expecting. And so, you know, I started my downhill 
and it was very soft and I just sank and it was like, you know, heavy, wet, thick snow. And if it's wet, thick snow and you don't have any, you know, and it's just packed or if it's mm-hmm. just soft, you know, you can start your skin. If there's ice underneath, you're, you're done. And so, um, so with me being able to being the driver, stop the skid and stopped it, you know, from obviously going on its side and whatnot. And cause there was a cliff right there where we were canted. And mm-hmm. so, um, but it was great. We took our time. Like she said, we assessed the situation. We didn't get upset with each other. We said, okay, let's see what we've got. What's the situation? What happens if we do this? What happens if we do that? Like Ray Highland, our good friend from Northwest Overland Rally, and BC Overland Rally, he always says, why don't you stop, put you know, a pot of water on. Sorry, I'm not British. Um, put a you know, pot of water on for, for tea, or tea kettle on for tea. I think he says it. Sorry, Ray. Um, but uh, and then just assess the situation, and that's what we did. And I think in retrospect, um, it was great for us to go through a precarious situation like that to get there and be very successful at it, and um, and talk our way through it. So it was it was really good to have that hmm. that information and go and forward. We stress. So. <laughs> yeah, the experience with that too. So how does that work? From like, so let's start with navigator to driver. Like you're navigating, figuring out some stuff, and all of a sudden she's like. Hey, we're stuck. Or were you well aware of what's happening? Or, and are you like, darn it, now I got to get out and help? And you know, it's not. I didn't get stuck. Is there any? How does that work for you dynamically? Well, um, because of how the hill was, I'd already been out of the truck to kind of help um, spot her down the hill, mm-hmm. um, which is when that happened. So um, basically, that is kind of my responsibility. Is she's the driver? Um, that means she's driving. So if we do get in a situation, then I'm the one who's getting out of the truck um, and spotting, you know, if it's just kind of a a more difficult line um, or, you know, if we're in a recovery situation, then I'm, um, you know, making sure that all of the recovery is right and recovery gear is set up right. um, And then she gets in the driver's seat and then I assist her um, with with that um, outside of the truck. So... Mm -hmm. Um, if it's a recovery situation or a spotting situation, then I'm getting out of the truck, taking a break from my navigation duties. Um, and then, you know, pretty much every other time, if it's just, you know, okay, we're going to air down or whatever, then that would be on her because we have to stop the truck um, and I can continue plotting. Sure. And so, and Mercedes, from a driver's standpoint, do you feel extra responsibility not to get stuck? Well, obviously, um, because you, know, you have goal... because you have a navigator. So if you you know if you're out there by yourself, you get stuck. It's like okay, I got stuck. But now you have somebody else, a teammate. Is right. there added responsibility for you? Um, for me, I see that as you know we're a team, right? And her job is to get us to where we need to get, or to get us to say, all right, we need to go X Y Z place, at, you know, a certain place. And my job to get us there in one piece. Um, and so for me, if I get stuck and I'm trying to go where where she's pointing me to. It's, it's a team effort, right? I'm not going to fault her to say, hey, you shouldn't have taken me down here. I've got eyes myself. And, and there have been multiple times where, for instance, the St. Anthony Dunes, I got out too. And I spotted as well because they're, you know, it's a big truck with a big hood and I, I'm short and I can't really see over the hood sometimes. So, um, you know, and I think as long as it's a partnership effort as it continues to be and has it, you know, as it has been. If I get stuck, hey, let's get out. Let me see if I can if I can dig myself out, or maybe both of us we need to dig out and and be able to recover ourselves and keep going. So for me, it's not a hey, you got me stuck, or her going, you know, hey, you got us stuck, and, and this and that. It's yeah. you know, and maybe when we're really fatigued, maybe that might start happening. I'm hoping not. I mean, we've got you know seven days of major competition. Day zero doesn't count, but we're still also out there. So eight days of of a lot of driving. So. Um, you know, as long as we keep our, our, you know, our heads level as best as we can and not start faulting each other because A, I got her stuck or B, she, you know, she's off course or whatnot. You know, the goal is to have fun. The goal is to not kill each other, obviously, but you know, the goal is to have fun. And and I think we're going to have a ball. Yeah. I think, um, from my perspective, basically it doesn't matter if it's a mistake or if it's just, you know, one of those things that happens. Um, we have to just work together to get out of it because we have to be efficient. We have to get on to the next thing. And so arguing or, or blaming or whatever is just a waste of time. Um, right. You know, there's no, there's no point. Um, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day what it was. We got stuck. Okay, let's get sucked. Right. Right. So now you're able to test out two things. So at least you're able to test out like your navigation position. Did you have some ideas as far as like organization of what you had with you and placement of stuff uh, you know do you have some ideas now about what if you want to improve the situation 
Yeah, that was actually uh, one of the really great things. Um, one thing we actually came up with that I think is going to help um, is to put our camelbacks behind the seat. Um, so that way our cup holders are free. And with our cup holders, we can, you know, put some pencils and rulers in there. Um, you know, if I need to get out of the truck, I can just put my compass there. Um, so it's not, you know, um, going to get lost or dropped on the floor, um, which I tend to do a lot. <laughs> I, I noticed. I noticed you said pencils. Like, like... Where's my pencil? Oh, it's you know. Oh yes. <laughs> well, we've heard from a lot of uh, previous rebels that you lose a lot of rulers and you lose a lot of pencils. It's those yes. things that just slip out of your hands so quickly. And and so I bought duplicates of all the rulers. Um, I've even got the mechanical pencil and I have extras, but I've got the really good one that she um, found online. It's a Japanese one that she ordered, so I ordered a duplicate. I've got a duplicate plotter, which. Um, said plotter because I brought props this time. I don't know in my dark house if you could see it very well, but um, you know, and I've got a, a duplicate compass too. So my job is to make sure I've got dupes for her should said, you know, 50,000 scale that she so desperately needs. If it gets lost, I can go, well here, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> and from a driver's standpoint now, this was this the longest time you've spent behind the wheel of this Tacoma? Uh, no, actually, um, the Cinder Hills um, practice after Overland Expo West was a couple of days. So, right. um, but um, driving down from Bozeman, even though a lot of you know it was tarmac, but getting there a couple hours later and, and doing one solid day at the dunes, then driving back any of the time behind the Tacoma is good. Yeah, so I think that's probably the longest day we've done. Probably the longest day, and here's my cat. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. If you see a tail or if you see a head bobbing up, it's my ancient 20 year old cat. Sorry guys. <laughs> she can say hi though. Hello. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, yeah, I think that was the longest day consecutively. Yeah, correct. That we we're off road together. Did, now, did you get more comfortable driving it longer that day went? Cause yeah, I know there's some issues with the hood high size, just some issues with the size of it as far as right. not issue, but like comfortability with it. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the clutch, yeah, and the clutch, and the clutch. Um, but uh, you know, yeah, I, I definitely did, especially in the sand. Um, you know, we had uh, the practice of the Cinder Hills area outside of Flagstaff, Arizona, was these like you know millions, well trillions, I'm sure, of these little pebble things that were all volcanic, and so it simulated sand, but it wasn't the real light, you know, uh, soft, deep, you know, just you sink in it in some areas, and some areas is pretty hard, like St. Anthony Dunes which I think is a lot more indicative to what Glamis may be. And Glamis, we're actually going to be going to in a couple of days. Um, so, but yeah, it was it was great for me to be able to get more comfortable, um, you know, use the rear locker, um, which we did needing to get up some really steep inclines um, and just get a feel more for when the vehicle starts sliding, when the vehicle's off camber and I start crab walking or, or, you know, if I really needed, you know, give it a lot of gas and, you know, of course it's manual transmission and just really, you know, hunker down. And right. practice my, my smooth and quick shifting. I think that was a turning point for me, was to be able to go from, from second to third in, in low range and just really have that, that spot on really quick shift and not lose momentum. So that was probably the biggest thing that was a winner for me out there. Well, there are a lot of winners, but I mean, I think that was the biggest, uh, biggest uh, obstacle that I was able to overcome and say, okay, all right, quick shifting, that's critical when you have a full manual. Right, right. And also for navigator not to be like... <laughs> yeah, right. I know my favorite <laughs> it's not the goal. <laughs> all right so what's next so let's let's talk what's going on so you guys go in pra another practice session yeah and uh so this time it's the rebel U in glamis okay. uh, so this is actually a training that is put on by emily miller the founder of the rebel um and a couple other folks um, who have a lot of driving experience um so we're going to be with some really seasoned instructors uh, we're also going to be with some fellow competitors, um, so it's going to be, um, you know, a really good learning opportunity for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's three days, three full days. Okay. All right. And so we're going to catch up the guests then. Oh, what'll be nice, I was just going to add with that, is is now uh, we just found our helmets or got our helmets, um, thanks to Product 41 and, and Zamp helmets. And, you know, I, I found some goggles and um, neck braces and things like that. So I'm planning on, this will be odd, but I'm flying with my helmet and flying with all my gear. Um, I'm flying to Salt Lake City from Portland to meet up with her Then we're going to drive down together. Yeah. But for me, especially as the driver, I want to have the whole entire setup on my head running glamis so I can get the idea of, okay, this is my helmet and, you know, and how is it going to feel neck fatigue wise and, and my back and, you know, I don't have the best back and things like that. And, and I want to be as fully outfitted and bring my, you know, bring my compass and all the good stuff that I you know, compass here somewhere and, you know, and practice, but be as 
prepared as you are. So like Camelback, you know, like she said, we strung behind. Um, so we have our water packs. So we've got our tubes right here. So yeah. which worked out great in the St. Anthony Dunes. But get all that stuff ready to go. So we're as in as full of a race mode, not race, rally mode as we can be um, and be able to practice that way. Yeah. yeah. I think that's going to be critical. All right. So where do, where do yeah. people find out more about free range names? So you can visit our website at www.teamfreerangedames.com. Um, we also have an Instagram, and that is Team Free Range Dames. Uh, same thing for Facebook. Uh, we also have a GoFundMe. Uh, it's gofundme.com slash Team Free Range Dames. Um, so we are accepting some donations that help us with equipment, travel expenses, and the entry fee. Um, and you can also follow us along if you go to rebelrally.com during the actual competition itself. Um, you can follow us in real time, uh, kind of get excited about, you know, how we're doing at the end of the day. Um, yeah, should be fun. And we also just want to give a quick shout out um, to our sponsors, too. We've got several notable, notable sponsors. So Bomber Products is supplying the truck. Uh, Crane Chef Culture is supplying helmets and a lot of the media coverage. Um, Elise, you've got a couple that you wanted to mention, and I've got a few as well. Yeah, uh, Mac um, is uh, a graphic designer who lives full time out of her vehicle, and she did our logo for us, which is awesome. Um, and we now have that up. Um, it's really rad, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we also you have. Buy stickers. <laughs> huh? You can buy stickers soon. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have stickers up on the website, so you can uh, get a sticker to show how much you support us. Um, we also have uh, Overland Cruisers is a Land Cruiser and Toyota specific shop here in Montana, um, and they're gonna do some of the uh, repairs and maintenance, um, just to make sure that the truck is in tip-top shape before we head out for a full, you know, head all the way to Tahoe and then drive a whole rally and then back from San Diego. That's going to be a lot of miles. And we've got a couple extra quick sponsors here that I just wanted to thank. In addition to all of our GoFundMe donors on, online and offline, um, any dollar is, is certainly appreciated. But Tribe One Outdoors is a really cool company. They do a lot of different um, kind of cabling and bungee systems to keep all your cargo on one spot. Um, uh, Max Tracks is another one that's going to be coming online. We're super uh, stoked to have Max Tracks online. Um, you know, Warren to help assist with any extra recovery gear that we need or any gloves, things like that for accessories for a recovery. Um, also pull pal for a land anchor, um, which yeah. is important as well, because, you know, we, we tested it out. Andy and I actually tested it out in the dunes with our van. That was a funny, that's like a whole nother episode in itself to talk about that experience <laughs> with my helmet, with everything on. And yeah, um, yeah, over the, over Memorial or Labor Day weekend, it was quite fun, but um, and then we also have uh, Shift Pods just came on board too to be a product sponsor. So we're super uh, stoked to have their new mini Shift Pods and also a couple cots and some lights from them. Yeah, it's actually really cool stuff. I set it up in our living room yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> People are just... sending me photos at like 11 at night. I'm like, this is rad. <laughs> so, but thanks to everybody and hopefully I haven't forgotten anybody. There are more that are going to be coming online here shortly. So we'll be um, posting on social and, and noting those as well as the logos at the end of your episode too. So thank you very much to all of our donors. Well, fantastic. Can't wait to see how it goes and see if you're still smiling then today. Uh, th thanks for watching. Make sure you check us out on pickuptrucktalk.com, Facebook, social media, Twitter, Instagram, all pick up various pickup truck talk. Again, Thanks for being on the show. Thanks for uh, uh, coming on for this episode. We have two more to do, and we're going to check Elisa's smile. We're going to check how <laughs> dark the house is. And we'll... Hey, come on. <laughs> Hit subscribe to watch more of them. I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right.